Hello and welcome back to JBCTR. Now today is um, actually it's a bit of a, an anniversary for this car. So on the channel at least uh, I haven't done a one year in review so I thought it would be nice to do. So today we're going to cover what the car as a stock package is like to live with and actually how the modifications have got on. What are they like to live with day to day? A lot has changed since I last made a video, mainly because the clocks have gone back, which means it's time to rock out with my jumpers out. And I've also binned off my glasses, so I'd probably look a little bit alien to you. But in terms of today and the review, I first wanted to tell you about all the negatives of owning an ST in the standard form, because clearly that's what you're worried about. And um, I'm glad to report there aren't many. Uh, so the biggest issue, that I have personally is the paintwork. Now this is inherent across all Fords. The paint is really, really thin and unfortunately that results in stone chips. Now the rally flaps have done a good job of defending them off through the winter or I'm, at least I'm hoping they will do, uh, but we'll talk about modifications and stuff a bit later. Now my other bugbear, which is actually probably the only two bugbears I have about this car is, is on the inside. So as I mentioned, um, in here, this is my bugbear. Now, SYNC 3 is a marked improvement on the outgoing Mark 7's infotainment system, and it actually, all around, it's pretty quite good. Pretty quite good, that makes sense. We'll roll with it. Anyway, my bugbear is actually with CarPlay. Now, CarPlay works really well, and especially since they upgraded it since iOS 13, they've made it really, really difficult to use with SYNC 3. Now, flipping between the two platforms, I guess you call it, is really hard. Um, so iOS 13 CarPlay in itself works really well. Sync 3 works really well. Getting between the two is now pretty damn clunky and it's just annoying. That is probably my biggest bugbear with the whole infotainment system now. But otherwise, in terms of the car, out of the box, it is an absolute riot. Um, None of these little bugbear things that I've mentioned, they, they don't really matter. Yes, you might get some rattly plastics because it's at the cheaper end of hot hatches, but it just doesn't matter. It's an absolute riot to drive. Okay, so on to the modifications, and now this is where it gets dangerous. Now, the reason I say that is because when you modify a car, I mean, well, clearly modifications, you can do absolutely anything. And as a result of that, it means it's actually quite easy to completely ruin a car. Now, as you know, this, is, this car is brilliant, straight out of the box, um, and the last thing you wanna do is ruin it. And I personally don't believe that I have. So if we go right back, um, my oldest modification is a Miltec. Now, the Miltec exhaust has been on the car for over a year now, um, and I must admit, it's one of, one of my favorite modifications, I think, because when it's in comfort mode with the valve shut, it's only marginally louder than stock, which means I still have the option to get up early in the morning and not wake up the neighbors. And for me, that is a must. Um, I, really don't want to upset my neighbors so getting, having that option is is great but when it really comes alive is in sport and race modes um, you may be able to hear them in sport now not sure if it'll pick it up um, but the overrun that you get from the exhaust is just massively massively improved by the miltech with the stock system yeah you got a few like pops and bangs but they were more like splutters because it just sounded a bit muted to me. Um, so having that Miltec really opens that up and allows, allows the car to breathe and shout and prove that it's a fiery hot hatch. So uh, yeah, Miltec, thumbs up. Next up on the list is the CE UK induction kit. Now, I've got to be completely open and honest with you. Um, I was actually really disappointed with this when I first fitted it. 
Nothing wrong with the package. The package itself fitted the car really well and it looks really good in the engine bay. But the issue that I had was, well, it, it didn't sound very good. And uh, I was one of the first people to get an induction kit on this car. And um, I was 100% hoping for the induction sound of the old Mark 7. So you put an induction kit even on a stock Mark 7 with a 1.6 turbo and you get this glorious sound of induction. And then I put an induction kit on the little 1.5 Dragon engine and you got, well, not much really. Um, you could barely hear it from the driver's seat and I was just left a bit, a bit underwhelmed. But all is not lost um, as I have added a Revo software to the car. Um, now, of course, as part of that software and making the car a little bit faster, boost is increased, which means induction is increased and the car is gulping far more air than it was before. And actually, the software has made the CUK induction kit really come alive. I mean, it's exactly what I wanted now. Um, you've got that lovely induction sound like you got on the old Mark 7s. Um, and it's, it's glorious. Like, it's... I... Yeah, I really like it. The combination of the CUK induction kit and the Miltec when you're on full chat is bloody lovely. I mean, it's wicked. Now that is all well and good with the car sounding nice and all of that, but I'm very much a function over form kind of guy. So I would be pretty disappointed if all of these changes hadn't done anything to the way that it drives. Now, as I've mentioned in many videos before, the way this thing drives now with the, with the addition of the Revo software and the extra power is great. And the bomb dyno is particularly happy. But the problem I've got is that the bum dyno doesn't produce any figures. And without figures, I mean, there's nothing to debate on the internet. So I took this car for a dyno. Uh, pretty much straight after I got the Revo software first time around and it produced some pretty pretty unholy numbers. Um, it, at the time it was one of the most powerful readings a Mark 8 Fiesta ST had, had produced um, and of course that record has now been smashed multiple times by other cars and that's that's how, how it goes. But you know I'm not really in the run or the race I should say for power figures. I'm in the race for a bit of fun and then if I get some figures as well then so be it happy days but because this is the internet I want to give you guys some figures to debate and something to argue about so today I'm gonna to see if I can take back my title of Dino King um, since I have now added a pro alloy cooler and I'm really really hoping for some some epic results so uh, that will be at the end of the video so stay tuned now, having that extra power is great, but unfortunately, this goes back to my point of making modifications to a car is easy to ruin it. So with that extra power, you need to make some other changes to the car in order to get that power down to the ground and also to make the car stop. So in terms of getting the power to the ground, um, one of the best changes I've made is a PowerFlex torque mount. Now that sits at the back of the engine and then when you're on the power, instead of allowing the engine to twist like this, um, it sort of holds it a bit more steady. So the stock one that was in there is obviously designed to have a real low NVH, which is noise, vibration and harshness. And that means that inside the cabin, it's really comfortable. But as mentioned, it allows the engine to flex. The power flex stops that engine flex or minimizes it, I should say, to give you a much better gear change feel. That's really good. And most importantly, it stops wheel hop. Wheel hop being when you're on the power and the tires bounce up and down and it produces a horrendous banging sound. Now with that fitted, all that gone uh, and gear changes feel slicker. The only trade-off is a slight increase in vibration in the cabin when sat at idle, which I can live with. It's more than fine. Now, the other thing I would strongly recommend that anyone does when they're increasing the power in the car is to increase the performance of their brakes. Now, I've gone for a, an upgrade kit provided by SCC, which consists of braided lines, upgraded brake fluid, some grooved pads, and obviously some upgraded brake pads too. And when installing it, I was a little bit, a little bit skeptical because I was like, well, it's not a big brake kit, is it? But in actual fact, 
I've been blown away by the performance of these. They are significantly better than stock, with the only trade-off being that they, they can squeak a little bit when they're cold, but honestly, even on track, took around Silverstone, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I would 100% recommend these for, for anyone who's after a halfway house between big brake kit and the stock brakes. These are awesome. Now, when it comes to the most obvious changes I've made to this car in the last year, it's quite clearly the visual modifications I've made during my series of my kiff. Now, I've never actually done visual modifications or visual changes to a car before because it's not really, it's not really been me. Um, they don't really serve any purpose and I've never really had a need for a car to look nice. But as I'm now making videos, I thought, you know, why not? Let's make it look pretty. So I've done obviously the splitters, I've had no problems with them, they don't scrape and I think they look pretty nice and actually quite OEM too. Probably the mod that's most borderline for my take is the vinyl wrapped wheels. Yes they look cool but they are a bit of a pain to live with. They've actually lasted really well, they've been in the car for about three months but the trade-off I've got from having wrapped wheels is the fact that I have to wash them. If you get the pressure washer too close to them, they come off and you can't clearly use any wheel cleaning products at all. So they're not easy to live with um, and that's why the car currently is a little bit dirty because I, I've kind of held back from washing it too much in order to preserve my wheels. But that said, my front tyres are now getting a little bit low and I really don't think the vinyl is going to survive a tyre change. Um, but we'll see, we'll see how they get on. What else have we done? We've done spacers as well. Now spacers are also a bit of a performance benefit as well. So you lose a little bit of turning with your spacers, but actually the car, it's, it feels a whole lot more planted. So spacers I think are awesome from a performance benefit, but on the car, as you can see, it gives it a really wide stance and I think they look epic. Now, one of the other modifications I've made, which actually turned out to be quite controversial, although I wasn't expecting it to be controversial in the slightest, um, was the rally flaps. Now, I think these look really cool. With the spacers, the wheel does sit out just a little bit from the bodywork, and then the rally flaps tie in with the spacers and really make them, you know, sit nicely and flush. They also have a practical benefit in the sense that they will keep your paintwork or protect your paintwork from large clumps of mud and stones and that kind of stuff so actually they they're a really good modification for the winter the only draw, the drawback of these is that they do catch on stuff um, you hear them as you go over speed bumps and all that kind of stuff but as they're made of kylan they're incredibly resistant to abrasion and they just sort of snap back into place so the fact they scrape is really not too much of an issue but you do need to be careful if you're reversing now, if you go on the front, you'll find my two favorite modifications. Now, the first one is the CEUK fog light bulbs because they do exactly what they say on the tin and they all, all they do is just change the color of the fog light bulbs to match the OEMs, but I think that was much needed as when they were yellow, they didn't match the headlights and as they used as cornering lights, they looked a bit strange. So yeah, I really like them. And to be honest, the story is the same for all of the CEUK bulbs on the car. They've been great, fit, forget, and they look much better. And the second modification on the front is my most recent and possibly my favorite, although I've said that around most of them. So the Pro Aloe Cooler, I love this thing. As you can see, this thing looks epic behind the front grille. Because I've gone for it in black, um, it's one of those modifications that you'll only notice if you look really hard. Uh, and honestly, I, I just, I love the look of it. It makes the whole of the front end of the car look more aggressive. But its biggest surprise for me was I was actually expecting this to be sort of fit and not really notice until we got the stage two softwares released. But even with the car just running the Revo software, this thing makes a big difference. Um, as soon as I put it on, bum dyno, very happy. Um, but as I mentioned before, we need to get it on an actual dyno. So uh, yeah, 
let's head off and see if this thing has actually made any difference to the numbers. So uh, let's get to it. Right, and uh, as if by magic, I told you to be careful about rally flaps, and uh, yeah, I've kind of, oh God, I've kind of killed it myself, so uh, bear with me. We just need to try and fix this. Ah. 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 Okay, now as you can see, um, the issue I've got is that this is bent forward. I've lost a cap there. Um, and as you, and I'm on full lock there, and it's catching on the wheel, which means if I go anywhere, I'm gonna be catching on that. I've got no tools to, uh, to remove it. So I think I might have to limp it home and then take the front ones off and uh, see if I can straighten out this metal bar and then get them back on the car. Okay, so what I've done is uh, I'm out and about, thank for my parents, not too far. They've not got a huge amount of tools, but they've got this little thing. So what I've done is I've just simply bent that back and hopefully that will stay out of the way enough to get the dining run done. So we'll, uh, we'll see how we go. So after the debacles of this morning, we have arrived at the Tuning Society and of course, there's only one thing for us to do here, and that is see how much power this thing is making now I've added that pro alloy cooler. So let's get on with it. Deep down I probably knew that I think I would be holding on to The one thing that I know is stronger So there we have it. Um, not great news, but still we're in excess of Revo's quoted figures. Now with the hardware on the car, so we've got the intake, the exhaust, and the cooler, um, I would have expected at, at least a little bit more than the last run, but instead we're 10 brake horsepower down. So obviously the last one was 262, we're now 252 or thereabouts. Um, so yeah, um, I need to go away find out if there is anything wrong with the car um, if there is put it right and then we'll come back if not maybe it's just a bad dyno day who knows so um i'll leave it up to you guys to decide now if you want to come down here um, see what your car can do on this dyno then obviously this is the tuning society in basingstoke on the last friday of every month they have a bit of a free-for-all come down here jump on the dyno see what your car makes and uh yeah let me know your results if you come down here and with that, I think we'll leave it there. So if you enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of me and other car content, then feel free to subscribe. And I'll catch you in the next one.